So God calls Abraham out of Babylon and he takes him to Canaan to the promised land. And God promises he's going to establish a nation from him. And unfortunately Christians have missed the point. They focus on the nation instead of the reason why God called the nation. You see, God did not call Israel simply because he preferred Israel. He called Israel because by preserving this people with the truth and with the holy line, eventually from this people established in Canaan, in Jerusalem, the Messiah would come to the world. In other words, the center of choosing Israel was not Israel. It was Israel's Messiah. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, why did God take Abraham out of Babylon to Canaan? Notice what we find in Joshua chapter 24 and verses 2 and 3. Joshua chapter 24 and verses 2 and 3. And it clearly explains the reason why God took him out. It says there, beginning in verse 2, And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nahor, dwelt on the other side of the river. What river is that? When the Bible speaks of the river, it's the Euphrates. In old time. And then what does it say? And they served other gods. What was happening with the lineage of Abraham? It was becoming corrupted by other gods and idolatry. Whose agenda was this? Satan. Did Satan know that Abraham was a member of the Holy Line? He certainly, why would he want to corrupt them with other gods? What is the devil's battle cry? To prevent the seed from coming because the seed is going to crush his head. Are you understanding this? See there's more than meets the eye here. God didn't call Abraham to come out of, out of Babylon to go to Canaan because God wanted to have a favorite people, Israel. The purpose of Israel was to proclaim the message of the coming Messiah to the world so that when the Messiah would come, the world would be ready to receive him. You're not with me tonight. So it says in verse 3, Then I took your father Abraham from the other side of the river, that is from the Euphrates, led him throughout all the land of what? Canaan and multiplied his descendants it says here actually it's seed and gave him whom? and gave him Isaac now notice Genesis chapter 12 and verses 1 to 3 Genesis chapter 12 and verses 1 through 3 by the way what we're discussing in our lecture today is critical for understanding Bible prophecy you need to remember what we're studying because most Bible prophecy today that is taught centers on Israel but it misses the point because prophecy does not center on Israel prophecy central cent centers on Israel's Messiah the prophecies of the Old Testament are messianic Jesus said if you believe Moses you would believe me because Rose, Moses wrote about me Beginning at Moses and all of the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now notice Genesis chapter 12 and verses 1 through 3. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country. See, God called him out from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall, now notice, I will bless you, and then he says you will be a what? God blesses him so that he can become a blessing. It says, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the Jews of the earth shall be blessed. No, it says all the what? All the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now if you read through Genesis you'll discover that time and again it not only says that in you all of the nations of the earth will be blessed, it says in your seed all the nations of the earth would be blessed. The only reason why God says that they were going to be blessed through Abraham is because from Abraham came whom? From Abraham came the Messiah. Now it's interesting to notice that God chooses Abraham an individual from that individual he forms a huge nation 
and that nation is to focus on preparing the world for the coming of whom? of an individual. It begins with an individual, spreads to a people to bring the message about Messiah to the world, and then brings attention to an individual at the end. And then we're going to notice that that individual who is Jesus then calls a people on the day of Pentecost to proclaim the message of the Messiah to the whole world. In other words the plan begins with an individual goes to a nation to prepare the world for the coming of the Messiah the Messiah the individual comes and then when Jesus comes he calls a people just like he called the Jewish nation to proliferate his message to the whole world about the Messiah who has come. The only difference between Israel and the Old Testament and the church is that Israel in the Old Testament was to prepare the world for the coming Messiah the church is supposed to proclaim the world to the world the Messiah who has come now this is exciting isn't it? now notice Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16 lest you are wondering whether I'm on target or not notice Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16 the scriptures tell, tell us this very clearly it says there in verse 16 now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made to whom were the promises made? to Abraham and his what? and his seed, and now notice he does not say and to seeds as of many but as of one and to your seed who is Christ. To whom were the promises made? the promises made were made to Abraham and his seed and who is the seed of Abraham? Christ. Who is at the very center of the call of Abraham? it is Jesus Christ by the way do you know that in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20 it says that all of the promises of God are yes and amen in Jesus Christ by the way do you know that God made four basic promises to Abraham you have them on your list we don't have time to read them we'll come back to them by the way in our next lecture where we'll deal more specifically with Abraham and the covenant promises God first of all promised him the blessing that from him would come the blessing that's in uh, Genesis 12 verse 3. Secondly, he promised him the land. The blessing? The land. And some people say he promised him the land of Canaan. Listen folks, Abraham knew that God was promising him much more than the land of Canaan. It says in uh, Romans chapter 4 and verse 13 that Abraham knew that God had promised him that he would be the heir of the world and in Hebrews 11 it says that Abraham looked for a city a heavenly city whose builder and maker is God he knew that the center of the promises was not old Jerusalem but new Jerusalem in other words God promised him not only that little stretch of land over there known as, as Israel he promised him the whole world of which that land was a down payment so he promised him the blessing he promised him the land by the way he promised him that he would have dominion over his enemies he would regain kingship in other words and he also promised him that he would have a seed through whom all of the nations of the earth would be blessed four basic promises the blessing the land dominion and the seed 